So today we are super excited to have Jamie Curl of Portland's Quinn. Yes. Uh, Candy's Magic. And I think we've got the modern day Willy Wonka with us today. So joining <laughs> and welcoming her to Google. Thank you. Thanks thank for you for having me. Nice, thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. So, so what yeah. are we gonna do? Well, um, I would like first to just tell you a little bit. I'm sure you like have gathered what we're doing here, which is that at Quinn and sort of like in my life philosophy, we make candy with real food. That's like the bottom line. So you have sort of mass produced candy, which has uh, chemically made stuff to taste like real food. But what we do with candy is use real food to make candy that tastes like real real food, and essentially. Real quality ingredients are core to Google's food philosophy. That's what I heard. Part of the reason we wanted to partner <laughs> with Jamie, right? We believe in uh, like an 80-20 balance, healthy and indulgent in life. So there's a place for candy. But we really believe it should be the highest quality ingredients, yes. cared for in the best possible way. And then you'll get the most delicious end product, which I'm pretty sure we're going to prove today. I hope so, yeah. yes. So uh, throughout the book, which is in front of some of you, which is this book that we have called Candy is Magic. And available for sale in the back. Available for later. sale in the back. Um, and we use, you know, so what we're going to do is sort of go through these different recipes that use the strawberry. This is, you guys live in a great place for strawberries. And so it's about to be strawberry time around here. So. Yeah. And that said, Perfect. like the recipes we're going to do today, if you wanted to do this when it wasn't strawberry time, like in Oregon, strawberry season is like two days long. So for most of the year, we use, we get frozen strawberries from farms that during harvest season, harvest all the strawberries and then freeze them for people like me who then go and buy big buckets of frozen berries, essentially. Great. So it's a, the nice thing about it is that any of the fruit stuff that's in here, if you can buy it frozen, you can use it. It totally goes right into the recipes in the same way that it does. So yeah, the way that we do it though, to use real fruit to turn it into candy is that all the fruit has to be roasted first to remove some of the moisture that's in the fruit so that you can kind of control the outcome of candy a little bit better. So that's where we're gonna start, which is essentially this sort of roasted strawberry with lemon. Um, so we have here some strawberries, this recipe, is in the book, so you could, oh look at you're following along. Good Googler, <laughs> that's a good Googler. <laughs> yes, it is page 37 in the book. Um, and it's essentially, this is super easy because all you're doing is taking fruit, putting it on a pan, adding some stuff to it, throwing it in the oven and allowing it to roast until it gets to, this is like perfectly done. This pan here is a great example. It has some really sort of darkened edges on it, so it's, it's, you can tell the strawberries have shrunk down. Obviously what's sort of left there is a lot of very intense strawberry flavor because you take the strawberries whole, fine. Even the big ones, like this giant guy, you can leave it big. And then you put a little lemon juice on it and the lemon juice sort of brightens the flavor of the strawberries and then you're gonna add sugar to it as well and a little bit of vanilla bean. Just a little. Is this the kind of thing you could do in advance and then keep it? Yes, you, you can. Have time you to can do make the whole this. Recipe? Say you are growing your own strawberries and you have the strawberryest thumb of anyone you know, and you have, you know, your 2017 harvest of strawberries is very, very. Your yield is huge. You can make this puree ahead and then freeze it, nice. and then you can make with it ice cream, strawberry marshmallows, strawberry lollipops, like a bazillion things. So just keep it around in your freezer. The other thing you can do, which we'll talk about, is. You can keep it in your freezer or your fridge for a couple weeks, but your freezer kind of indefinitely and let it thaw. Then you can mix it into yogurt or your cottage cheese or anything that you like berries mixed into. So this is going to become a kitchen all-star for everyone. Yes. Love it. Okay. So then you put a little bit of sugar on those berries and then there's a little bit of vanilla bean that kind of goes into it and you would put that on there. And then this is a little kitchen magic because you would put this into your oven that's been preheated. <coughs> Are you ready for it? Wait for it. And then magically, Ta -da! <laughs> you have this. <laughs> right, yes. Yay! It is magic. Woo! It's definitely magic. So then once you have these berries, you puree them in a, a blender. Um, and this do you is, want all this good stuff in there, or do you try to keep the you know, more in the, caramelized parts I'll out? I'll tell you that in the, the recipe in the book, when you do puree it, it's set, you basically put the berries in and it depends upon the fruit. So not every fruit is the same way because some of it you would strain out a little bit of the juice because it's gonna be too juicy to have the candy turn out correctly. 
But these look good enough to where you would just put everything that's on here nice. in the blender. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that step is pretty easy. So I would like you all to engage your imagination. I have put these berries into the blender <laughs> and I have turned it on. <laughs> and I have let the blender run for one full minute. It's an yes. extremely quiet blender. It's new technology. <laughs> Do you hear it? And then it turns into this. It's like a velvety, delicious strawberry puree, right? Can everyone see it? Okay, good. So then we'll save, save the noise of the blender. So what we've got is we've put the ingredients on the tray. We've roasted the berries. They turn out like that. It's beautiful. You put it in here and you blend it and then voila, beautiful. So the first thing that you can do is make ice cream if you wanted to. And I think everybody likes ice cream. So in the book, there's a sort of base recipe for vanilla bean ice cream. And you can then, I mean, if you would like, if you're really following along, this is on page 100, but you basically use this easy vanilla ice cream base to make a lot of other ice creams, including strawberry ice cream. And it's super easy because all you're doing is making a cream that has vanilla bean in it, like mixing cream and vanilla bean together, sort of like these. And then you heat this cream up. Let's see. In a pan, which we'll do over here. It looks like a lot of vanilla bean. And I'll tell you that I like a lot of vanilla in everything that I make. Eat cookies, cakes, everything. And I make like pretty normal cookies. I used to own a bakery actually. And I baked for like nine years as a owner of a bakery. And people were like, their cookies are the best. You make the best cookies in the world. And the real secret, oh, thank you, is that it just has a lot of vanilla in it. So if you want to make like <laughs> real world class bakery cookies, just add more vanilla than the recipe calls for. And people will be like, this is the most amazing thing I have ever had. <laughs> and it's like, well, thank you. <laughs> OK, secret ingredient. so you've got this on. I'm glad you know how to do that. They I, gave me a lesson. I still don't. Ever. I was given a lesson. I've done this a hundred times. <laughs> okay, so that actually leads me to this really good thing. So you're all like, you know what I don't have is a candy factory. So cool, you, we have this book now, but how are we going to have the fancy stuff to make the candy? We don't use anything fancy to make the candy at all. We use induction cooktops and six human beings, and we make, you know, 20,000 lollipops in four days. Like, one person can do that because we... How we run production is we don't let anyone, A, have a choice over what candy they make, which is terrible. It's not that good for morale. Um, <laughs> but it's all candy. It is all candy. Is and it's a candy very, drudgery? It's a little. It's a very sweet, <laughs> it's a very sweet environment, yes. But it is really a great idea production-wise. And I'm sure, like, pro you, you, all of you in this room understand process and the importance of it. it. We establish a real expert in one area of candy making. So one person makes lollipops. And because that person does it over and over and over again, then they turn into this like human machine, which is what I'm aiming for. So <laughs> it's, it's better than it sounds. Lollipop um, machine. Yes, yes. So that that person can then become so skilled at it that when we get a giant order for lollipops, we don't panic. Instead, it's like, yes, we can handle this. We will make your you know, 35,000 lollipops in two weeks with one person doing it, which is amazing. But it, we can do it. Which be, and it's because of this repetition. So. Anyways, back to the you don't need a lot of equipment. So to make the candy, all the recipes in the book, the most sort of the trickiest thing that is nice to have is a thermometer because that helps with hard candy, gumdrops, and marshmallows. But the rest of it, as you can see, it's just like stuff you have around your kitchen. We're going to look at this later, but this is a candy funnel. But you can use a glass measuring cup instead of this, and I'll show you when we get to that, to the lollipop part. So it's not this huge investment in a ton of equipment that you'll only use for candy making. It's like you have a pot, you have some bowls, you have a blender, maybe you have an ice cream maker, and then you don't really need much, many other things. I have a question about the recipe. Yeah. So there's a lot of vanilla bean, yeah, a lot of seed in there. Yes. Using paste, vanilla paste? We use vanilla beans that have just been put into like a coffee grinder and have been pulverized, the whole oh, bean. Okay, so the pod yeah, and the yeah, seeds yeah. inside. Great. Yeah. But you can also scrape a vanilla bean and put it in however you sort of There's choose so to do it. Skin, yeah, yes. yes, exactly. Yes. Okay. All right. 
So basically, to make the vanilla ice cream base, you get this cream heated up, and then you add sugar. And one it really does great. smell like the most delicious ice cream base in the world. It is, you know, the thing about it, and also if you, I mean, I'm sure that several of you here have made ice cream before, and this isn't the type of ice cream that you have eggs and you're doing tempering and you're adding things to sort of. This is honestly just cream and and fruit and vanilla and sugar. So it is um, totally delicious because there's so much fat in it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying High on the quality fat is it is okay. it, it I was just saying on the way here in the car that when you make the chocolate ice cream that's in the book it doesn't even melt. You could let it sit out for like 2 hours and it's still <laughs> still the shape of the scoop but then it's like room temperature ice cream when and it's it's like a whole another experience of ice cream. Totally. Yeah, she's yeah. totally Willy Wonka. She makes non-melting ice cream. Thank you. And the secret Thank is you. fat. Yeah, well, yes. I mean, isn't it to everything? I swear. I mean. Um but I do Yes, it's yes, it, it is. And it's the texture of it when you eat it right away is like t totally delicious, smooth, so creamy and lovely. But like a month from now if you keep it in your freezer, it won't have that same feeling because there's nothing in it to extend the life of it. No like xanthan gum and all that crummy stuff to sort of keep it to have the same mouthfeel. So, when you do make this ice cream, you know, make it in the morning, put it in the freezer so it hardens, and then serve it for dinner that night. And none of the recipes have a huge yield, so you don't have to worry about having this sort of... I mean, is there... There's no such thing as too much ice cream, I don't think. So, pretty easy that Plus way. One. Right? Totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so once this is heated, you add your sugar in. And this is like one of the tips that I can give you on this. You're, you're looking for the sugar to melt, and one of the ways to see that it's melted is if you sort of pull the pan aside, and then let some of the cream drip off your spoon, then you can see if it's dissolved or not. So you're just looking for the sugar to become dissolved. And once it has dissolved, then you're, you've got this easy vanilla bean ice cream base, which is what you need to make strawberry ice cream with. So if you're following along, some of you are, there's a, there, strawberry ice cream is page 102, but. So this is super easy because then all you need is this vanilla ice cream base and some strawberry puree and then you turn it into ice cream, which is also awesome. Yes, um, in, I, vanilla bean powder is a great way to do it, and you can, make, you can make your own by just putting a vanilla bean in a coffee grinder. And even if you leave the vanilla bean out on your countertop for a couple days so it dries a little bit, if you have an especially sort of sticky one, then you just put it in and it grinds it up. But you can also buy vanilla bean powder. Now listen, when I wrote the book, vanilla bean powder was at around $50 a pound. You're not going to buy a pound of it, you're going to buy a tiny bit. But then last week we got an email from our person who we get our vanilla bean powder from, and vanilla bean powder has gone up to $285 a pound. So <clears throat> I, didn't, I, <laughs> I didn't write the book with the, uh, with the knowledge that it was that expensive. So cool, when you get to that part, yeah, and then you go look it up online, and you're like, this lady is insane. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not actually that crazy, but it, is, it has become a... It's a slight vanilla deterrent. Is real these days. It's it really, is, it yes. It's really intense. Yes. Okay. So doesn't that smell nice it and it's nice and amazing. hot? So pr this is, you've got this vanilla bean uh, cream in, like base that way and you will chill it. And once it's chilled, you magically have this, which is that that has been cooled down. It's a little bit sort of brown in color because the vanilla has sort of seeped all through it. And what you would do at that point is you've got over here, yep, you just take, honestly, you just take this base. Who wants to come with me to do this? You could come. And you add the strawberry to it. Then you would mix it all up. Possibly a whisk would be a better job for that, a better tool for the job. This is sort of a sampling, but the bowl that I had before, yeah, it's, it's not, it maybe it'll, it's like, you know, between a pint and a quart of the roasted strawberries, depending upon how much moisture you get out of it, how big your berries were, that kind of thing, yeah. It depends upon, fruit-wise, it depends upon the fruit, because some strawberries are super juicy, blackberries are a super, ju super juicy fruit, 
peaches are not as juicy. So it depends if there's a ton, and in the recipes of the book, I kind of indicate like this would be a good time to strain some of it out so that it's a little bit more, so you can control the outcome of your candy. But some strawberries like this, I wouldn't have strained these, the strawberries that we have here just because they're, they're kind of, you can sort of see, there's not a ton of liquid left. Okay, all right. So now that you've got the strawberries and the vanilla together, this is chilled. That's one important thing. And then you have your ice cream make machine attachment or, you know, fancy countertop ice cream compressor machine, which if you have that, I'll come over after this is done and we'll make ice cream. Or when you get done with work, whatever. And then you're going to add it in there to your ice cream maker, let it spin. And basically, you're just going to let this go until it turns into ice cream, which is never a bad thing. And then, yes, from that point, after this spins, put it in your freezer, let it harden up so that it's sort of scoopable. And then I would say eat it within the week or the day that you make it because you can't wait because you know it's so delicious. Okay, so do we want to eat ice cream? Do we have, we're going to wait to the end to eat ice cream? Okay, you can't have it yet, you guys. <laughs> you can have it. <laughs> One of the things, that's actually a really good, candy already. really, you, you do candy. have candy. One of the things that I love about candy the most and making all the things that sort of come from candy is that it does teach a lot about process and it does teach you a lot about patience for sure which is we're gonna be patient for the ice cream. That's why I'm saying this. So, cause it, it, all the recipes that we make at Quinn and all the candy that you're enjoying and everything in the book, I made all of it up. And I didn't come like from the candy company down the street and get a new job or like make my own candy company up cause I wanted to like change the way. I made it all up. I had a bakery for nine years and that was a good time. It was fun. It was a lot of work because it was, you know, like a retail bakery. So every day we had fresh product, nothing day old, you know, like just a ton of work to do it. And I had 30 employees in a couple of locations and it was, it was a real, real dedicated situation. And I started making candy because I was bored with cookies and cakes and muffins and scones and morning stuff. So I made a batch of caramel and it worked. And that was the thing I was like, you, okay, this is great. This is like, you can cut it and put it in a wrapper and sell it. So we sold it at the counters of the bakery. And then the next candy that I made was a lollipop, which we're going to make next. And the idea of taking something that is a liquid and transforming it into something that holds up on a stick, I was like, I'm a wizard <laughs> because because we used, I used real fruit in it. And that's sort of how the, the philosophy behind the way that we made candy came into play because I did it all in a bakery. And there are strawberries and here's like a refrigerator full of fresh dairy products. And like, so it was easy to kind of come up with candy that used the stuff that was around me. A, I'm pretty cheap and I don't like to spend a lot of money if I don't know something's gonna work. So I don't invest in a lot of equipment or anything. We just, you'll see, we do it all very, very by hand. So. That is strawberry lollipops. Yes, strawberry lollipops. Using the same strawberry yes. puree. Yes. Right. So, you've you have your roasted strawberry puree that you have put in your refrigerator or in your freezer and you made your ice cream and now you think what else can I make? And what else you can make is candy lollipops. So the strawberry lollipop is beautiful because we didn't really strain any of the seeds out of the puree so that you can see them when you hold it up to the light and we'll pass you you have the blackberry lollipops now so you can kind of get the feel for for what i'm talking about so this is pretty easy for candy making because you take sugar glucose and water and you add it to the pot but i'm going to tell you a little bit about glucose before we do that so glucose is this thing called an interfering agent. And when you melt sugar, which you have to do with a little bit of water so that it will completely dissolve, after that has happened, sugar is always fighting to turn back into a crystal. So basically what candy making really is, is controlling sugar from recrystallizing. That's like the bottom line of it. So what glucose does is say two little 
bits of sugar in a pot and they've melted. But one is like, oh, I really liked being a crystal. And the other one is like, I liked it too. Let's form a gang. And so they come together and then they form a crystal. And then all the other sugar is like, that's a great idea. I want to do it too. And then they all recrystallize. But what the glucose does is comes right between those two renegade bits of sugar and interferes in them recrystallizing. So the glucose that we use is French, so it's very fancy. Super fancy glucose. <laughs> but the reason that we use it is because it comes from Europe, so it's guaranteed to be non-GMO. And it is basically derived from the potato. So it's not corn syrup. It's not also potato syrup, because by the time it ends up as glucose, which is essentially like an invert sugar, none of the parts that made it exist anymore because it has been so transformed into what it is. Yet, amazingly enough, it's still a natural product, so we can use it. Okay, and so... Maybe that's something we would just get online? Yeah, you can buy it online. You can get it at any cake decorating store. Even like Michael's, the craft store in like the Wilton aisle where they have like the fondant and the little rollers and the cutters and all that, you can get it there too, but okay. really, and you know, we... Do you have Chef's Warehouse here? Anybody know about, do you yeah. have Chef's Warehouse or pro, do you have Chef's Warehouse? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? So you can do a will call at Chef's Warehouse for any like specialty product. As long as you pay for it ahead of time and go pick it up, you can get like any, you know, even like five gallons of olive oil if you need to. But you can get glucose through a, like a, yes? Yeah. What does glucose taste like? It doesn't taste as sweet as sugar. It's, do you want to taste it? <laughs> you know you want to taste it. We have tasting spoons. Have fun. And then you can report back. You tell the group. Thank you. You're welcome. It's like not sweet pancake syrup. Yeah. Unsweet it's the consistency of like, yes, of like a of syrup in general. Yes. So there you go. So sugar and glucose together equal sort of like a medium sweet thing. So if you were to eat, like we have some candy that we'll compare later. To make mass produced candy, they use uh, high fructose corn syrup and sucrose normally as a com combination that is sweeter than actual sugar. And that's one of the reasons that candy is so, mass produced candy is so addictive because it creates this sort of, un like something that isn't natural in the real world because it is actually sweeter than sugar. So when there, we have some candy side by side that we can compare, especially noticeable with the Starburst and the Strawberry Gre Dreams Come True side by side. It's very, it's, it's amazing. So to me, it's amazing. I mean, I'm also like a total nerd. Let's but go with it. I think it's okay. amazing as an appropriate It is amazing. Support. Yes. So we have in the pot sugar, the glucose, which is not sweet pancake syrup. Technical term. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And water. Let me turn it on. I know you guys probably all know how to use your stovetops at home, how they turn on. <laughs> maybe, maybe yes? not. Okay. And so then at this point, what you want to do is uh, poke, don't stir. And the reason you poke and not stir is because any sort of unnecessary, unnecessary agitation to the pot could cause the glucose to sort of lo lose its footing in its interfering project process and could still result in something that's crystallized. So you just sort of poke it in until the sugar is uniformly wet. That's fascinating. I hadn't heard that before. Poke, Usually, don't stir. poke, don't stir. It's my, I mean, if I could get a tattoo of something, that's what it would be. <laughs> Pretty good tattoo. Well, okay. I, I <laughs> It's a good one. You spend a lot of time explaining that one. That's yeah. really about candy. Making, See, it I is. Swear. It is. As a 90-year-old, <laughs> a good one too. That's what I, yeah. Okay, so we're poking it, and we're going to basically put this over medium-high heat and just let it come to a boil. And the temperature. This is a good one of the good things here is that you, this isn't a part like a part of the process to rush. You want to let it be sort of over medium-high heat so that it will come to temp melt all the sugar, the glucose can start doing its job, all work together like that so that eventually you come to a very nice crystal clear candy at the very end. So, let's let this come up to a boil. What do you want to talk about? 
put me on the spot. I was <laughs> watching. I wasn't going to remember that yet. Um, now, what's, is there some way you could mess this up? Yeah. What should we not do? <laughs> OK, the first thing you should not do is be afraid of it. That's the very first thing. Don't be scared. Don't be scared because making candy is not unlike making like a pot of soup or some tomato sauce for your pasta. All you're doing is putting ingredients in a pot and heating it up. It's easy. The thing that scares most people is like the part where you get to the point where you have to like use a thermometer. So to be honest, accuracy is really great in candy making, which is why we weigh everything. Everything is sort of done by the gram so that it's very, very precise because it helps with your outcome. And what I don't want to do is like write a book that has like, oh, you know, a little of this, a little of that. And then it doesn't turn out for the home reader because I, don't, I mean, I don't know about you, but I read a lot of cookbooks. And I get very frustrated Super frustrating. when you've spent the time and the money and you have invested this like part of yourself to do it and it doesn't turn out. So I like to be very precise it's because of it from the consumer side, surely. Well, yes. But then, you know, you get people who are like, why is it so fussy? Because it's candy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah. So then it's like science. Yes. Be so precise. yes. So don't be afraid because that will be your first step in sort of messing it up because you'll just like self you'll self defeat you know you're just defeating yourself by starting out scared so Olivia has a question really yes I burned myself really badly because I just can't remember that the candy is hot because it doesn't steam or anything so how do you oh. remember how do you remember your candy's hot like, so you don't burn yourself <coughs> Whoa, okay. <laughs> no, it's funny. Actually, the first time I ever made caramel, it looked so beautiful. I was like, oh, oh, totally burned my While finger. While it was inside the pot? No, like after I yeah, laid it out. it out. Oh, yeah. That's really, I mean, it takes a long time to cool, so it is very hot. We should make something, a sign for you. <laughs> the answer is we'll make you a sign. Yes. Like, watch out. Hot. It's hot. Hot. Hot pan. <laughs> hot something because that's the thing I mean hot maybe candy. just get it sort of into your head that it actually does take a long time to cool the caramel that we make we actually usually let it cool overnight before we cut it and it's not because it's hot the whole time but it actually just helps in setting it up so it's easier to cut but we pour but it into back a frame. To patience now yes we are which is one of the best the best teaching tools about candy is patience trust the process and be patient <laughs> okay is that helpful do you want me to come over Yes, <laughs> I have induction. You do? Yes. I like induction. Do you have induction and an ice cream making machine? Because now you're stacking up the reasons. <laughs> All right. So, okay. And then what else can you mess up? Yeah. What else should we not under do? Cooking. Under cooking. I wouldn't undercook the candy. We are going to cook this to a temperature of 315 degrees. That doesn't Ooh. mean like 310 because it got like close enough to 315. It means so, 315. Yeah, 315. But if you go over, that's going to be okay. So that's like the thing. It, like 315 for sure, but if you stick your thermometer in the pot and you see it's like 319, that doesn't mean you should throw away what you're doing. Just proceed and be but confident. But it says 310, keep going. Keep going, yes. Be committed exactly. to the 10. Yes, commit. Gotcha. Commit to the 315, exactly. So don't be afraid. Right. Don't undercook it. Yes. What else? keys to success. Don't undercook it. And while you're waiting for your candy to cook, swirl the pot. Okay. So poke, don't stir. Swirl. And after it, after the sugar has become sort of uniformly wet and you have it boiling a little bit, just, just swirl the pot. Gently swirl it. Give the pot just a little to give wax it, on, like, wax And on. that's mo Mostly to distribute the heat so that when you go to take the temperature, you're taking a temperature that's hopefully uniform throughout the whole pot. So this is the kind of thing you should not like walk away from. Well, you know, I was just going to say, while this is cooking, you could do this one other thing. <laughs> but you, as long as this, it doesn't boil over. This doesn't mean like go to the other room and switch like the, the clothes from the washer to the dryer. I don't mean that. I mean, you could like go to, like, right down here. here. Yeah. Near it? Yeah. And if you're, if you're going to, um, there's two ways to do sort of shape the lollipops once you have the syrup cooked. You can use molds or you can use a nonstick mat. And so the nonstick mat is how we started making all of the candy, at all the lollipops at Quinn. We did not have molds at all. The molds cost around like a dollar and 15 cents. This is how like crazy I am, but I would not buy them because I was like, who knows if these lollipops will work 
let's just do it on the nonstick mats so you can kind of see this organic shape in the book. The, the cover of the book features perfectly molded lollipops, but the lollipops say on page 118 are more organic in shape because those have just been poured out on a mat. So while this is coming to temp, what you could do is take your lollipop sticks and set them out on your mat so that they're ready to have the candy poured over them, or you could fill your mold with the sticks while you're waiting. Yeah, still pat. Yep, exactly. Super easy. You can sort of fill it in there. And you know what makes it even easier is if you grab a piece of parchment paper and take like a, something that's one and a half inches round, because that's around the size that's kind of nice for like your mouth. Use a Sharpie and draw those circles sort of spread out on the parchment, then put the sill pat over top of it, then place the stick sort of in the circle. Then you have a, like a guide so that you don't make like a unwrappable giant. I mean, you can make huge ones, no problem. It's just a little harder to wrap those. Yeah. Can you guys hear this? This is actually really good advice. Um, yes. If you're going to pour your lollipops out on a sill pad, um, Jamie was saying you can draw circles on parchment the size you want, put the parchment under your sill pad, so you have kind of a guide as yeah. you're pouring out. Because you can see it through the, pat, the mat, and it makes it where you have a guide, yeah, for size, exactly. So you could do big, small, but cellophane, which is what we wrap the candy in, like you've seen it, is you can get it in all various sizes. So just make sure the lollipop size you're making sort of matches the cellophane that you're going to use. And then you're, we use like between four and five inches. Yeah, okay. yes, yes, yes. They're almost too sticky, even just for like the regular lollipop mold. The funny thing about a lollipop mold is the first time you buy a plastic, like a mold like this, you get it on the internet and it's around a dollar and 15 cents and you get the first, you get your first one in the mail and you're like, sweet, and you make your candy and it does not come out of the mold at all. And you're like, what did I do? So then you're like, well, maybe I'll oil the mold. So you oil the mold and it comes out. And then you clean the mold, and then every lollipop you make after that always comes out. It's like they just need like some like they need to they be broken be in. Yeah, you have to cure the lollipop mold. So these good to know will all come out. But we have had a lot of a lot of sticky sticky stuff. Okay, so the same thing that we're doing right now is used for a lot of the lollipop recipes throughout the book. Okay, one other thing, if as you you can kind of maybe you can see, if you get a little sugar that's stuck to the side of your pot and you want to just poke it down in, you can. You could use a pastry brush dripped in, dipped in a little water to do that, or you could just sort of not be afraid of it and let it, let it do its thing. So it's been boiling or bubbling for a little while, so we could take the temperature of it to see where it's at. One of my, if we got to choose superpowers in life, I would like to be able to tell temperature with my eyes I would also like to hold things in my hand and know how much they weigh, if we're talking about what our dreams are. Those are mine. <laughs> <laughs> so this is around 225 degrees, and it's been cooking for what? Eight minutes? Not, Not even, even, probably. Kay. Five. Okay. All right. So how long, what, I mean, what, how long does it take you to make a batch of lollipops? Is this an afternoon, an hour? Oh, an hour, from start to finish. Yes? A little bit louder? Do you use a yeah. candy thermometer? Yeah, well, this is like a digital thermometer that goes up to 400 degrees, I think. My preferred brand is the Thermopop from Thermoworks. But you can use any, any. it doesn't have to be like a big candy thermometer that like sticks on the side of the pot. Can it be though? Well, I actually, those you can use, but I would say don't, don't let it just sit on the side of the pot because then you're just taking the temperature from one, one area in the pot. I like to be able to sort of swirl the pot a little bit and then take the temperature directly in the middle. Okay. Noted. We actually teach, when we hire new people at Quinn, which is actually not that often, thankfully, we teach like a whole afternoon of temperature taking because it's because we, as everybody on the team has to do it the same way or else we have all different outcomes. So they hate me because I'm like, okay, today's the day. Get your thermometers. It's important. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. And then we, we, it's, yeah. So obviously the side of your pot is hot. Don't stick your hand down in there because it is boiling. One thing that you know about it is that 
because it has sugar in it, it's sticky, so if it does get on your skin, it's not as easy as it is to wipe like boiling water off yourself because it'll stick to you. So take care of that. Okay, we're going, we're going. Okay, what else? Do we have questions? Yes. No, 315 for sure. 315 for certain because you're going to take it off the pot. I mean, the, off the, you're going to take the pot off the stove and then you're going to add to it the strawberry puree and a little bit of strawberry flavoring and whisk it. So that will cool it down. Commit to 315. Yes, 315. 315. Let it get all the way there. Yes. What other question? If you do happen to get sugar on yourself, what is the best way to get it off? Go to the sink and put water on it. Right away, yeah. ASAP. Yeah. What'd you Other say? Questions? Yeah. <laughs> he will cry. Yes. What was the question? Is it mm-hmm. easy to burn this? Oh. The sugar without the glucose burns really easily. So. Yes. I mean, you would notice that it's becoming burned because it will change from being clear to becoming caramelized. So if you did walk away and you came back and you saw the pot and you see that it's caramelized a little bit, then you're you're getting close to close to burning it. So yes, definitely possible. It's a, it's time that it's on the heat and temperature. Uh, we we like a, this is gonna we're gonna cook this to 315. When you want something that's like really deep and richly caramelized, it's only 330 335. So there's not a huge difference. So the neighborhood of burniness is only like 15 degrees. Yes. Exactly. Fair. Okay. Anybody else? Because we got like a 90 degrees to go on this thing. We do. Oh, good. Ice okay. Cream. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Chef. Great. Yeah. How quickly should you eat your live candy? How quickly oh, yeah. should you eat your candy? We, we, with our reta- we sell candy across the country, and we say six months. The marshmallows that are, the marshmallow recipes that are in the book last, they are better within about eight weeks because they are, mar- fresh marshmallows are like just the most delicious thing. So we do recommend eating them quickly. But the rest of the candy is around six months. Okay. And it's not, it's Good not enough. that um, it tr- goes bad. It's just that it's the most enjoyable within six months. That's a good amount of time. I can tell you this one thing about candy that I like to tell people. Please. When you, when you notice that, it, that sugar is recrystallizing. So if you have ever had a roll of Lifesavers and you've kept the Lifesavers in your bag or your pocket or whatever, and you open the package a little more and you notice that the one or the two on top have sort of a white crust on them, that is sugar recrystallizing. So that, I mean, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't take a lot and it's just that the package of Lifesavers has been open Sugar so the candy can forming. absorb moisture from the atmosphere or whatever it is. Yeah. It's pretty dry here most of the time, right? Yeah, ish. Ish. Because we make candy in Portland and because of that, it rains all the time. Yeah. So we do have dehumidifiers in our kitchen just to keep moisture out of the air. But you'll always have sort of better luck with hard candy on a dry day yeah. than you do on a really like wet macaron. day. Yeah. Exactly. Can't right. make them when yes. it's humid. Yes. Growing up, did you have a favorite candy? Oh, what was your favorite candy? Oh, yeah. I loved all candy. Um, But what I, it depended upon if I had to buy the candy myself or if someone else was buying it. If someone else was buying the candy, I would always choose like chocolate, delicious candy bars that were all caramel chocolate, cookie type crunchy stuff. If I was buying the candy with my own money, I always bought something that lasted a long time because I was like, the economics of it. I'm like, I want either a job job breakers, yeah, because they lasted forever, or fun dip because it seemed uh-huh. to me you get like three sticks of candy and the powder, and it was just a yeah, yeah, seemed like a better deal. I love that that's your perspective. <laughs> oh yeah, I like economized everything as a child. Well, you still do. Books, You're talking yeah. about yes, yes, it's true. <laughs> Books, like I would, if I had to buy a book with my own money, I would buy the longest book because I was like, this is, it's worth it. It's an thing. investment yeah. in your time. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and it just, you get more for your money with a longer book. Ice cream related questions now that you're eating ice cream. Yeah. Sure. No. Do you know what the fact is? Whatever the f- 
Yeah, it's not, this is like a definite, I would say, like cheat on ice cream. It's just to kind of show you the possibility. It's frozen delicious. Yeah, so you could technically make all of the fruit purees in the book and just use those in any ice cream recipe that you like to make. Oh. So this is like, you know, so if you have an ice cream recipe, you can still just add the fruit yes. puree and do the same thing. Yes. Love it. Yes. Great. So if you have a favorite, do that, add the puree. Like that. Exactly. This thing is like inching, inching it really up is. the chain. It's really trying. But we can also just, if we wanted to skip ahead, we could fake the end of it probably. So yes, what's going to happen once this does reach the proper temperature is we're going to add fruit puree and a little bit of strawberry flavor. Talk to us about the strawberry <clears throat> flavor. Okay, I will. So we, we have our flavors formulated for us by a natural food producer that's actually located here in California. And so we buy it in very, very large quantities. And it's all made with fruit extracts. And the same with any of the candy that has like a color added to it. We use, it's the same, it's like uh, beet, beet powder, turmeric, those mm -hmm. types of things mm -hmm. that are all natural. Sure. So to, you can find online a natural flavoring you just need to make sure that it's suitable for high heat application. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Do you have a recommended online retailer for mm. To get this stuff? It depends upon, I mean, you can get all of it on Amazon if you wanted to. That, I mean, it's easy. Or you can, there's a place in Las Vegas called Chef Rubber or Chef Robert, and they sell every like cake, candy, mold, tool, ingredients, like all sorts of all sorts of stuff. But I would bet that in this area of the world there's probably some sort of amazing wholesaler of this type of stuff that you Surely. can shop at, I'm sure of it. That seems delicious. Usually it's not usually like Costco, because usually you can get like a small amount. I mean you can probably you can get like one bucket of glucose or one little bag of cocoa powder because they won't, they won't make you buy a case of it. They'll, they'll break up a case for you. No, that's a great, that's a great question. We so do it by do sight. Do you measure the temp of caramel or do it by sight? Yes, so it's the one candy in the book that I don't use a the thermometer for because I have found in teaching people how to make caramel at work, that the panic sets in around the time the sugar starts to reach the done point and people go crazy. So I figured out that if we eliminate trying to move the pot to keep the hot spots moving around and eliminate the idea of trying to like swirl it, hold the blah, like freak out, that to teach people to do it by color. So in the book, there's a color chart that sort of shows where it starts out and the journey that it takes to being slightly cooked, halfway there, completely finished, and then the point that you kind of add the cream and butter. So it's all, all done by sight. And the color that we aim for is sort of like a dirty copper penny to be finished. And then you remove the sugar from the heat, add the fats, which is a lot of the, some of the recipes in the book use coconut milk, but it's usually heavy cream and butter at that point, and then you whisk it. Yeah. Right, one specific color, yeah, throughout the pot. For caramel, we use stainless steel, but only because it's uh, less expensive. But a lot, you know, so many candy makers use big copper pots for it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Strawberries. This is strawberry, I think. Yes, strawberry. I believe so. Maybe the vanilla. The strawberry, though. Seems like the strawberry. Strawberry. Yeah. <laughs> Two days from now, this will be ready. Right? Yeah. Okay, so maybe what we're going to do is pretend now. Yeah. We're going to stick to the. Kitchen this is magic. like TV magic. So, oh my gosh, this thermometer said 315. So this is all done. <laughs> so at this point, what you'll want to do is, it's at 315, you turn your heat off, 
you remove your pot from the heat and you take your plate, you get a whisk, you have your whisk, you add your flavoring. You add the puree. What was that? Strawberry. strawberry. Natural strawberry yes. flavoring. Made for high heat applications if you're shopping for it. And then you get those two things in there and you whisk this together. It smells amazing. Doesn't it? Reminds me of the strawberry shortcake doll from when yes, you were little. That's a good Dating smell. Dating myself, but it's exactly no, what it no, smells that's like. That's a good it's smell. A strong scent memory from childhood. Okay, so then once you have that done, if I journey down here, will everyone be able to see? Or shall I? You'll have a funnel <clears throat> or your measuring cup, whichever you prefer, and you just take the hot, beautiful candy and you pour it in there. And while you have your funnel full and you still have some of the candy in the pot, you can kind of set it down. Don't recook it. That's the only thing that I can tell you. So that if this hardens a little while you're waiting to funnel your candy out, do not take what's in the pot and reheat it to where it's boiling because then it will recrystallize. You just got to leave it like it is. And then as you get better at either using a full funnel or a full measuring cup so you can do it, then you'll, your yields will increase and increase as you get better at at making lollipops. Okay, this is my favorite part. I have a real stance when I funnel candy that I get made fun of for all the time at work, but it's very like, and usually <laughs> I'm like, don't talk to me. I'm doing like, you know, 200 lollipops. So you just take, this part's really fun. You take the funnel or you could also do it with a measuring cup. And you essentially, this is a $7 object also. So it's, this is not like a million, this is like, you know, like, and the most amazing thing that we have found out is that almost every specialty candy making item that is sold in America is made in the state of Ohio. They are really serious about their candy and their tools. So you just lift up on the plunger and then close it. And then you have that really pretty lollipop. And then you just repeat it Do you want to try it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so here's what I can tell you. Okay, stance though. You can always add more, but you can't take any away. So go slow. Ooh. Oh, look at you! <laughs> it's like she's done this before. It, it's like we practiced, but we did it. <laughs> oh, thank you. So yep, that one good. Just, yep. yep. One really, uh, something that I like to do with the lollipops is I like to take the Dreams Come Chew, which is the fruity, chewy candy that you had, and take a little bit of it and put it on the end of the stick, and then put the stick in the mold, and then pour the hard candy over it, and then you have like a hard candy with a chewy center. That's awesome. And it's super fun to mix the flavors that way, so you could have like strawberry hard candy with a tangerine center, or like a super sour hard candy for the lollipop with lemon in the middle. Really delicious is the chocolate on the stick with coffee lollipop around it. That's yeah. very good. Those do recipes like are all. Sour How do you do it? Candy that's like sugar based. Oh, let me tell you. Okay. I just figured this out. She asked how you do a hard candy that's super sour. So if you add citric acid to something, that obviously makes it sour. But if you just continue to add citric acid to candy, the citric acid starts eating all of the all of the stuff that has the sugar sort of hold up. So we have made candy that we want to be super sour with citric acid, come back to it two days later, later and it's liquid in, in the package because it just, the citric acid just eats everything. So we have figured out that if you combine three ingredients that make things sour into one sort of slurry, then make candy with it, you can make things hugely, hugely sour because none of the three have enough in the recipe ratio wise to break anything down. Does that mean the sour this candy is not has less sugar in it? <laughs> it it's the same amount of sugar, actually. So, so it's but like the citric acid is like masking. Yes, the sugar citric like acid, so malic acid, and yes, yeah, sodium citrate are the three things that work for us. You did it. I did. You should come to Portland and work for me. Anytime. I know I can't pay you as much as they probably pay you here, but <laughs> you're really. This is like perfect. It's a little bit, a little, bit, say, a little bit different. So, the yeah, magic I'll come and stash with you. of. Just come and hang out. Okay. 
All right, so let's pretend that one of these is, I would actually love it. Candy magic. What? Yeah, who wants to try this? Actually, does anyone else want to try it? Yes, okay. Let's form a little, a little, let's put, let me see here, put that in this, put the funnel in that. There we go, and then let's put what was on the stove in this. Oh, one other thing I can tell you. As soon as you get done with this part, put this pot in the sink and run water on it. Otherwise, you'll be doing like, the dishes all night long because it'll really stick to it. Otherwise, you can fill this up with water and let it boil, and then it'll boil the sticky stuff off. Okay. Have that excess just been, or the extra just been sitting on a not hot? That's right, yeah. Okay, do you want me to talk you through it? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> that was a bad call. <laughs> No, I don't need you to talk me through it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get the stance, that's why. Yeah, if you, get, if you get on where you can, yes. And the key is always remember, all, yeah, the, the funnel is full, but always remember you can always add more, but you can't take any away. So it's kind of nice too. I just too. failed my job interview, guys. <laughs> oh, you, you didn't. You actually did. Look at the rest. Your, yeah, your, <laughs> your other five. Your other five are perfect. Okay, yeah, don't touch it. Don't touch it. It is hot. Okay, who wants to do, who wants to try it also? Who else wants to do it? You ready? Okay, yeah, come on. And th let me tell you, let me talk you through it. Okay. All right. So the stance is down here? Well, <laughs> the thing about it is you can choose your own individual stance. Once you get, like, once you get into it, you can, you'll know what your stance is, personal stance. Okay. So you'll obviously want to make sure that the sticks are in the circles, right? And this, the best thing I can tell you is that you just add a little so that you can get the feel for how the flow is. Lift up the plunger slightly. You don't have to okay. pull it all the way up, just a little, and then it'll flow out. Okay. Yeah. So we've technically got like five minutes left okay. in our actual food talk. What else did we want to talk about? Perfect. Yeah. Look at that. So good. Your stance is really it's good. It's the stance. It's really good. Also, it doubles as your workout because you're squatting. Love it. Yeah, you're so good. Yep. Look at that. Do we want to have everybody taste candy side by side? Yeah. Oh, yes. Do you want to do that? Can we talk? Do you, would you like to? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Does everybody have a kit candy. and a pencil, a little bag of candy? Yes, everybody does. No? <laughs> There are more down we here. We have more. It doesn't. Will you hand me some of the papers? But also, we need to taste the strawberry lollipops, right? Don't we? I think yeah. we do. Yeah. So they hard enough. I mean, you could pick it up quite quickly. Oh, yeah. 10 to 15 minutes, totally done. Here's our. Yeah. And this is the. Sheets? Here, I'll, these are strawberry lollipops that we just made, just magically transformed. <laughs> Yes. Oh, yes. And how Get long that. do those have to sit overnight? No, they're just like 15 minutes. Oh. It's really easy. Right on. Okay. And then we'll wrap one if we have time. You guys take all those. Let me get this off my hand. Okay. The candy comparison. Yeah. This is something that I like to do to show people sort of the real differences between mass produced candy and, the, and handmade candy. Okay. So the first that you have there is uh, the Dreams Come True, which is the pink wrapped candy, and the other fruity candy, which is the Starburst. So I only do these two side by side because so many people say that they're similar. But they're not that similar because the Starburst contains 17 ingredients and the Dreams Come True contains five. Enough said. And it uses beet to give it the pink color, and we use the natural flavoring to give it the natural flavoring. And the reason that it doesn't stick to your teeth and is so smooth and delicious when you bite it is because it contains real dairy butter. So in a Starburst, it doesn't have any of that, so it is a little like chalky and gross. Is anyone going to eat the Starburst? Does anyone eat Starburst regularly? I mean, regularly, yeah. like <laughs> Halloween. That's great. Halloween. That is great. What do you mean? Great. Other colors of Starburst and Dum Dums that you have to buy in order to get. Oh, let me. Do you want me to tell you what we did to get those? So you can buy Dum Dums single flavors directly from the manufacturer, 
But the Starburst, I just went around to all the bulk grocery stores and picked the pink ones out. So that I could bring them. <laughs> and everybody who bought Starburst was like, what the heck? Where are all the strawberry pink ones? pink is the best yeah. flavor. Yeah. It, yeah. So there, yeah, that's how I did it, just to be honest. Okay. So the Starburst is obviously this like very tough, hard brick when you squeeze it. The Dreams Come True is very like smooth and delicious. The Starburst contains a ton of gross stuff like Red 40. In America, we use around 20 million pounds of food dye every year in the food in our food system, which is like the grossest thing. It le you know has been linked to hyperactivity in children, obviously. Some people believe that food coloring causes cancer or is like a contributing factor, factor to cancer. So obviously if you can make candy the right way, you would want to do it, okay? So the caramel, this is one of my favorites to talk about. We make caramel with sugar, a little bit of glucose, heavy cream, and butter. Sea salt, some vanilla. So simple, totally delicious. Caramel that's made for like mass production is made with this stuff called lipolyzed butter and it is taken from the gullet of a cow so that they can say that it's a dairy product, but it has actually been so chemically treated that you need like a pinprick of it in anything, any like ratio of like a, something you're making to impart dairy-like flavor. It's the grossest, <laughs> grossest product, and it's made, you know, it like is made by the millions of gallons because so many people put it in stuff. But they say natural dairy flavor on Gross. the label. Yeah, that's disgusting. And it's actually this disgust. So we don't use that. We make it with real stuff. Did okay. They do that so it's, it's faster it doesn't food. spoil. It leads to longer shelf life is the real thing. So all of mass-produced candy is made as cheaply as possible so that it lasts for years. That's like the main, the main thing with it. Yeah. Okay, so the and then, ultimate yeah. takeaway is like we could just make our own delicious candy. Which is exactly why I'm here, yes. Love it. Yes. Okay. The lollipop, do you want to talk about it? Obviously yeah. fake coloring in the dum-dum, but the cherry lollipop is so great and beautiful. Hold it up to the light. You can see the cherry skins that are in it. All the cherries that these were made with were grown in Oregon for us that we bring in and do the same thing we did with the strawberry, but with cherries. Love yeah. it. Yep. Okay. So fun. Are there any final questions? Yes. You could, you, you know what you could do. This is very tedious, but maybe you are tedious. Like I'm very tedious. You could take a little bit of the candy and pour it in the mold that doesn't have the stick. Then set the thing down inside, like the flower petal or the, uh, you know, herbs or whatever it is, gold leaf. Then put the stick on top of that, then fill it in with candy the rest of the way. Sort of like a sort of like a three step like layer, three layers. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Anybody else? Everybody has so much candy, you're all happy. It's a lot of candy. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.